So, if we're taking a look at what the different variables change if we're doing it in our standard form or vertex form, we're going to start by taking a look at this y is equal to a bracket x minus p squared plus q. So the first thing we're going to look at is what that q value or the constant in the equation is going to change. So we already have our original function that is represented by the y is equal to x squared. That's our base function we're always going to start from. Now we're going to add in a 3 at the end for a constant or a negative 3 at the end for the constant and see what it, this is going to function. Well, if I'm writing an equation for this, if my original equation was f of x is equal to x squared, then I'm still going to leave that x squared in there and then just add 3. So I'm going to state that I have y is equal to x squared plus 3. In the second case, I'm going to have y is equal to x squared minus 3. Now, if I plug this into my graphing calculator, I can put the two different equations in and then see how it changes. It might be a good idea for you to leave that y is equal to x squared in there just to see how this is going to change. So I have my y is equal to x squared. When I put in my second equation, y is equal to x squared plus 3, then I can either pull from the graph or go to my table to find these new coordinates that are going to exist. If I do the y is equal to x squared minus 3, then I'm going to have these new coordinates. I can stretch out my parabolas and take a look at what has actually changed. Well, if I'm looking at the change that's occurred here, I can see that my original shape started at a point and it went right one up one right 2 up 4, right 3 up 9. If I take a look at when I added 3 at the end, it started at the point, went right 1 up 1, right 2 up 4, or potentially right 3 up 9. It's going to be the same thing with the negative 3. So I can see right away that it has maintained the same shape. The only thing that has happened is that it has literally taken my graph and moved it up three units for every single point or down three units every single point from where it started. So I can use that to fill in the next chart. I can say, well, if I said y is equal to f of x plus 1, then my equation is just going to be y is equal to x squared plus 1. What did it do to my vertex? It literally just moved it up 1. My new vertex should be at 0 and 1. It didn't change the shape, but it did change the lowest point that exists because the lowest point is going to occur at the vertex. So it's still opening upwards. It has a minimum, but my new minimum is going to be 1. It didn't move it left or right, so my axis of symmetry stays the same. How can I describe the transformation? Well, any just direct movement without changing shape is called a translation. So I can say that it was translated one unit up. In the second case, I'm going to have that minus 5 we can follow the same rules. 
it's now going to become y is equal to x squared minus 5. The vertex is now going to occur at 0, and I've moved it all down 5, so 0 and negative 5. It didn't change which direction it was opening, it just moved the vertex, so now I have a minimum of negative 5. It didn't move left or right, so I'm just going to wind up with x is equal to 0, and I'm going to say that it was translated 5 units down. In the last case, we can see already that this is not in the form that we use, so we're going to start by moving that 4 to the other side and saying this would be the same as y is equal to f of x minus 4 to get y by itself. Now I can see that my q value is going to be negative 4, so I'm going to say y is equal to x squared minus 4. The vertex is going to be at 0 and negative 4. It's going to have a minimum of negative 4. X symmetry is x equals 0. And it was translated 4 units down. What is the effect of parameter q on the graph? Well, the q value moves the graph up and down. Compared to the graph of y equals x squared, the graph of y equals x squared plus q results in a vertical translation of q units. If q is positive, the parabola is going to move up. If q is negative or less than zero, it's going to move down. If I'm analyzing what the p-value, or the value inside of the brackets does, then if I'm starting with y is equal to x squared, and I'm replacing what's inside the brackets with, in the first case, x plus 3, or x minus 3, now I'm going to state that y is equal to bracket x plus 3 squared, or y is equal to bracket x minus 3 squared. We can put these into our graphing calculator and either use the table function or just find the points on the graph to figure out where this is going to move. For the first one, if I put y is equal to x plus 3 squared, then I see that my graph is shifting to the left. If I put in the x minus 3 squared, I can see my graph shifting to the right. But just like in the last case, the actual shape of the graph doesn't change. It still starts at the vertex and goes right one up one, right two up four. So, this is literally just moving the entire graph left and right. So for any of these, 
I'm going to state, well, what is it that I'm changing x out for? In the original one, x is just x. In the second case, I'm going to take where x was and change it with x minus 2. So if my original equation was y equals x squared, now I have y is equal to x minus 2 squared. What happens to the vertex? Well, when I had x plus 3, it moved 3 to the left, which meant that if I have a plus inside the bracket, then it gives me a negative at the vertex. If I have a negative in the bracket, it gives me a plus at the vertex. So because this has a negative in the bracket, my vertex is going to move to the right and become positive 2 and 0. It didn't change the shape, the direction, or move it up or down, so this has no impact on my minimum or maximum value. But you can see that because it's moving left and right, it has changed my axis of symmetry. So I'm going to say that my axis of symmetry is now going to be x is equal to, what's the x value at the vertex? 2. What is the transformation that has taken place? Well, it's been translated two units right. In the second case, if I is y is equal to f of bracket x plus 5, I'm replacing x with x plus 5. So my equation is going to be y is equal to x plus 5 squared. Because I have a plus inside the brackets, it's actually moving to the left, so my vertex is going to be at negative 5 and 0. It didn't move it up or down or change the shape, so I have a minimum of 0. The equation for the axis symmetry is going to be x is equal to the x value at the vertex, or negative 5. And I can say this was translated 5 units left. And for the last one, it's basically the same as the one that we just did. If I have x plus 7, then y is equal to x plus 7 squared. I'm going to have a vertex at negative 7 and 0, a minimum of 0, x is going to equal negative 7 for the axisymmetry, and it was translated 7 units left.